YouTube. Uh, I don't really have a new guitar today to do a video for, so um, instead I'm going to last. Uh, I don't know if I said. I don't know if you've been listening. Uh, I joined uh, the Black Sabbath band a few months, about a month ago, after the end. Um, but I also joined another guitar, another band playing guitar. So I'm playing the bass in the Sabbath band, and I'm playing guitar in. Another band called Voodoo Mist, Voodoo Next. I'm still not sure which one it is. I think it's Voodoo Mist sounds a better name. Um, so I'm gonna put what I've been doing with the, the after the end is I've been turning up with a different bass every week. So that's how I kind of know I've been in the band for six weeks because I've used six different bases so far. That was the one I gig with, though. gig with the Scavenger because it's the most it's the, it's the most Sabbathy looking one. So I'm cycling through the guitars in the guitar band now. Last night I took in my 1984. 84 Washburn Hawk um, partly because it's got a Floyd Rose and we're playing uh, Deep Purple Black Knight so I figured the solo in it is just kind of like it doesn't, it's not really a solo as such it's just whammy bar nonsense um, and this one has a Floyd Rose so this is a slightly later wing from the other wings I've got the other ones are all up I think it's about up to about 1983. They were made by a company called Yamaki, and they were sort of well, basically higher spec than this one. This one is a set neck, as opposed to being through neck. It's also a flat top, whereas the other ones are carved. Um, yeah. So this one had uh, the original bridges that came in these were pants. It was lying about somewhere, but it was like it was a sort of Floyd Rosie type thing, but it was really thin the metal on it so it was it was all crushed at the back it looked okay from the top but the, the block had fallen off the back because it was dead weak and it split in half and stuff so this one actually has a very expensive Floyd Rose in it a Schaller one which I got in a project a few years ago and was waiting for something to put it in uh, actually I tried putting it in other guitars but the problem is the block on the back of it's really long so it has to be a thick guitar for it to fit in and it fitted in this one but I mean these things are I think I looked them up and they were like 180 quid or something like that for a Floyd Rose which uh, like, seems an insane amount of money for a guitar part. But, in saying that, this guitar I haven't had to tune. I was severely abusing it last night with the tremolo. I didn't even tune it when I took it out of the gig bag last night. Um, so it totally is totally rock solid. It's not a floaty. Probably more because of the guitar. It's just a, uh, it doesn't have the recess so it floats, so it's only down bend. But it's really, really solid, and it kind of goes to the thing. If you if you spend enough money on a Floyd Rose, you're going to get a really good one. Um, the ones you can pick up, if you look at them in China, they're like a tenor and stuff like that, and they're just not as good as a really expensive one. I don't think it makes as much difference on, like, say, like a Telebridge, for example. Obviously, like a a real Fender one is probably a bit thicker. You can get like a, you know, but it really is just a metal plate with three saddles on it, so it's not. It doesn't make that much difference if you make one that's not very good, as opposed to a Floyd, which has lots of individual little components and you know things to that move. So it makes a much bigger difference having a, a more expensive one of these than it does having like a, a simpler, a simple bridge. Uh, yeah. So I took this guitar and I was playing through the soft take. Um, I was a bit concerned about it because the, the pickups in this, they're called, I think they're Washburn Eliminators are called, but they seem to distort very early. And this is unlike the other wing series, even though it's the same, it's a very similar shape. It's got a, I've actually seen an advert for it and it's like a lightning fast neck or something. So it's got like a, a shredder neck on it. It's really thin and fast. Um, but also the pickups, these Eliminator ones are sort of more, I think, I think more Randy Road sort of, 84, 85, I think there was a big change in the 80s about what guitars were doing. People were wanting them to do, you know, Randy Rhodes type finger, finger tappy stuff. As opposed to being vintage and sounding like a Les Paul, like the earlier ones did. I think is it's more um, to do with the amps. Like I think back in the early eighties, you know, like something like the Sobtex, a copy of a Marshall. But uh, so you would get your super distortion pickups and similar type of things that would be designed to drive a tube head into overdrive. 
Whereas I think, you I think by the time you got to sort of 84, people had distortion pedals. So people were using pedals, so you didn't need to have the same effect on a tube amp to make the distortion, which I was discovering last night when I was using it, noticing that it didn't actually distort the way this guitar, which is from 82, this is the one I was using last week, the Vantage Avenger. Um, it's a bit early, but it's got more your super distortion type pickups, which are designed to push like a valve amp into overdrive. Whereas I think by this point, it was more about, oh, use your distortion pedals. So it kind of, it was, it was reacting slightly differently. I don't know how much of that was just to do with the fact that, you know, the shape of the room or whatever. <laughs> But it does it just does it just stays in tune. I do need to learn a bit more. totally going to work out how to play the new baby metal track I think, I think I've actually had one out since called the elevator girl but the song called papaya if you've not heard it look it up on youtube it's fucking amazing it's the just it's so ridiculously silly and energetic it's <laughs> I think I might even get away with it playing normal tuning. But I've not worked out how to do the verse yet though. So that was me I just when I was uh, waiting for the camera to boot up. I kind of hit the first few notes correctly. Like, yes! <laughs> Yeah, so I figured these pickups a little bit um, on the metal side. They do have coil splits on it though, so you pull the volume controls up. The neck pickup. Of course, I've just eaten a pizza, so my fingers are greasy. It's quite difficult to pull the knobs up. So I've not, I didn't have any plan for this video. Uh, no, that, that makes it sound like I do actually have a script or a plan for most of the videos. I don't. So this was just um, faffing about with this. Um, one thing I want to say is uh, the Black Sabbath band, they've been in it for like six weeks. Well, the singer left. So we did a gig last Saturday and then we were meant to be doing a gig on Saturday just there and we had to cancel it, which is a bit shit. So sorry if you were going to, if you wanted to come and see us in Bannermans in Edinburgh. So... I've not really been in the band long enough to be super affected by the singer. The other two guys are really upset because he's left and it's like, which I understand, but I mean, I've only just got there, so I'm not feeling quite as upset. So we're on the lookout for an Aussie. So if you know an Aussie in Glasgow, give me a shout. Um, see if we can get going. Because we've really pretty, pretty much nailed the songs now. I was thinking of having a go at singing, but I don't think it's right for, if you're a Black Sabbath tribute band, you've really got to have a separate singer even though I do have the hair cut for it, so I'd probably cut it in quite well. I think um, next rehearsal will sing songs just you know, just to, to get us through them. Um, I don't know how easy that's going to be. Um, I used to be able to sing Symphony of the Verse, but I've noticed that 
since I got old. I, I don't quite have the same ability to scream like I used to, so it'll be interesting to see what happens there. But so if you know an Aussie, give us a shout. Um, I don't know what else we're going to do, we're just going to make some noise. <laughs> I don't think I've spent enough time playing this guitar to really get the hang of it. I wasn't really happy with it last night in the studio. Um, as soon as I plugged it in, I just thought it doesn't sound as good as the Vantage did last week. But um, that might just be because, you know, it's one of those, because I hadn't really played through the soft tech in years at proper volume. So I think maybe I was just really surprised at how amazing it sounded because it's, you know, like you get a week in your head of what it sounded like last week. I don't know, it just didn't seem to be as good. But um, the Floyd was a handy thing. I think I'll start taking in, I'll take in one of the big guns. Next week I'll take in like the, the other hawk, the older one, the through neck one. The reason I want to take this one in is because it's got the coil split option. Because I noticed that when I was in last week I was using the, the split coils on that a lot to get the... We're playing... Um, yeah, total, total pop classics, uh, Bad Moon Rising. Which coil tattoo to make it a bit better. Obviously, I'm not the singer. So I was thinking that Vantage, um, so really it was just a case of, I'm, I'm going to do, I'll probably do a wee video of these, uh, these, these guitars when I wheel them out and get them working. So it is a really nice guitar, it's very pretty, I don't normally like black guitars, but I think the, the white edging on it really gives it a, an edge, haha, <laughs> makes it cool. Um, what was I, I going to say about that? I've, I've done a video on that before. So this this guitar, uh, that's I reckon that that one there's a, a made by Chushin in Japan, and this is a Matsumoku in Japan from a couple of years earlier. It's got the craziest purple paint job. It's amazing. I'm, I haven't tuned this though, so I'll give it a, a tune before I go on. Or I won't give it a tune, it will just work. Yes, it does have a different sound, doesn't it? But it's got the same knobs and the same... Um, oh, it's, it's, a, it's the tones you pull out this one to make them single coil. It's got the same knobs and the same switch. Because they're, they're probably all made by Goto, I think. This one's got a thicker neck on it as well. This is more of a, it's more stratty. Um, it's about the 25 and a half inch scale as opposed to, I've not actually looked at that one. The earlier um, one you see is a 25 inch scale, which is the same as that wee Iron Brew guitar actually, and PRS do it as well. I think there's a big thing about PRS inventing the 25 inch scale to get between and it's like, nah, it was done years ago. Uh, there's my, my tape, there's my tape there. So I'll just assume that I don't know if they changed it. So is, is this Gibson scale, Fender scale, or neither? It's a 25. So it, it's, it, it maintained its original Washburn uh, 25 inch scale. So it's somewhere in the middle. That one's um, available as a BBR guitar which is a uh, you know black black red so instead of having the white binding around the outside it's red binding and I think then it would have like red writing on the pickups and then red numbers on the dials and a red logo on the headstock. They're pretty cool. I might need to get myself a, a Washburn BBR at some point. I didn't think they looked very good in pictures but my pal the guy who's got more Washburns than me just lives a couple of miles down the road 
has a couple of them that look absolutely amazing when you see them up close. Like, so I'm going to have to get one. This guitar is amazing, no, um... I don't know how much of that's to do, some of it might be to do with the fact it's got the, you know, it's just a hardtail bridge, in fact it's not even strung through, so we're just looking at there, it's just um, loaded in from the top, a brass bridge, brass saddles. But there's something about it, it's got the brass nut as well. There's something about it, it's just, it's, mm. it seems very, very high quality. Um, I'm not sure it's the prettiest guitar. The, the paint job on it's absolutely nuts. It's like purple sparkle flake. Um, I got this in, in a trade for one of the mad, one of the first switchy guitars I did. It was like a Strat and I think I put a gold scratch put on it and you know, half a dozen pickups and lots of switches and stuff. The guy swapped it for all, got this old shitty Japanese. Thing. It was like, I saw a picture of it and I think it was absolutely manky. I was going to say mock it there. So it was absolutely mock it. And then as soon as I cleaned it up and played it, it was just like, oh, this is awesome. I don't play it enough. I think um, it's, got, it's got a sort of, it's got a look. Yeah, so no big jam today. Um, I've already, I've already just been talking shit for seventeen minutes. I was, I was almost, I was almost making a party political broadcast there. I don't want to alienate anyone though. But um, and because I'd, I put a Mad Malco T-shirt on by chance, I thought, oh, I've got, I've got the T-shirt on. I might as well do a video. But uh, oh, shit's going all over the place here in, in the fantastic United Kingdom. Um, Well, if you, I don't know, if, you, if you don't know, I'm in Scotland and we shouldn't be in part of the United Kingdom. So sorry if that pisses anyone off. There, there's my political broadcast. So if it comes down to it, I'll, I don't want to wear a Yes t-shirt, but you know what I mean. Yeah, so sorry about that. But uh, Vantage and Washburn Hawk, and we're looking for an Aussie. And I should probably have just... That's right. That was annoying me in the studio, so I need to take that to bits and clean it. Rock and roll. I will have some more interesting videos coming up. I've got a couple of guitars I'm currently working on. Um, the other ones have just been selling too quickly. I've got this this uh, Kramer here, which is rather interesting. Which I think is going to get a new pickup system. I think I think this is a Korean one. But it's got a really really nice neck. Um, I think this might actually be, a, it just says Floyd Rose on it, it doesn't say licensed by Floyd Rose, so I think it may actually be like an actual by Floyd Rose one. But I've got a plan for this, um, the Octoblast pickup system, which I'm going to get like, you know, the quad rail I put in the BC Rich, so I've got like a quad rail and two dual rails. And then I've got a special switch that if I replace this one, it'll be a three-way coil split. So that if you've got the switch on, it just gives you three, or it gives you single coil, single coil, humbucker or humbucker humbucker quad humbucker like on one switch and uh, the reason I'm calling it Octoblast apart from the fact it's a cool name I can use that other switch I do that makes uh, you know the one I've been putting in strats that gives you the, the, the three humbucker the triple bucker well if I, if I put that into this it'll give you eight coils all in series one big massive fuck off eight coil mud blaster hence Octoblast so I kind of want to do that just to see what it sounds like Although I did do one, my decimator guitar, which I gave to my girlfriend in China, has has two quad rails and a dual rail, and you can switch, and ten switches to switch each coil on on its own, all the way up the wings. It's a flying V, um, and it's, it's so it's a it's a ten, ten coil pickup, whereas this this one will convert into a an eight coil pickup, but it'll also have all your usual strat sounds, plus humbucker. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be a sick number. I'm not sure what to do with the the colour though, because it's black. I mean, it's, it seems to be an alright neck. I've actually got this in from my, my pal Dal, who wanted to swap it for the, the last buck 
faster caster, but he like he's um he likes a, a gloss neck and it, it didn't have one, and he, he was going to swap this and he went I'll just keep that just now until we find until he get a guitar and he does want to swap it for so. All I've done so far is clean this. I don't really want to be cutting it up and painting it in case he wants it back, though. In fact, I don't really want to give him it back either. Um, but I think it might actually turn out to be a really good guitar. It was really badly set up and really rusty and needed a, a lot of adjustment. Um, so it's basically it's not the guitar he gave me anymore, even though it looks the same. Right, 20 minutes of talking bollocks. Rock and roll!